every day, everything I'm doing, I'm asking why can't it be done faster? Why can't I accomplish more right now? That it's not okay to put something off even till tonight. I need to do it right now. The only way that you're going to be able to push past the mountain of obstacles that is going to try to stop you is to have maniacal focus, to know exactly what you want. I built a billion dollar business without setting an alarm. Prioritize sleep. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have Michael Jordan level talent at something, and I want you to find it, embrace it, and use it to make a difference. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew in today's lessons from a man who went from growing up in a morbidly obese family to being dead broke and not being able to pay his bills to building a billion dollar brand, now wanting to build a studio to rival Disney and pull people out of the matrix, he's Tom Bilyeu, and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume six. Also, if you wanna know what Tom and other successful entrepreneurs have to say about building unstoppable confidence, check out my Confidence 254 series, where every day for the next 254 days, I will send you a short 30 second to five minute video absolutely for free to help you build your confidence. Check out the link in the description below. There's a gap between who people are and what they tell you they want to accomplish. Because mm -hmm. in the beginning, I hired everyone. Everyone. Right. Um, not because I'm super smart and thought, hey, I should. It, there was no one else. Right. right? Like we had a, the smallest <clears throat> handful of people ever. Um, and so I started doing the interviewing. As I was doing it, I start realizing, God, these guys tell me they want to do something amazing with their life. And if you just listen, like, wow, yeah, like I want to be on your team, dude. You're going to do amazing stuff. And then you realize they can't execute on that dream. Mm. So it, Why can't they? It, uh, they don't have the mindset yet. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, put in the work. All right, listen and listen well because no truer words are ever gonna be spoken. You can do anything you want without limitation, whatever it is that you decide you want to make come true in your life, you can do that. It is gonna take an inhuman amount of work. You're gonna to have to be prepared to break yourself in half. You are going to have to learn more than anyone has ever learned. You're gonna to have to push yourself harder than anyone has ever asked you to push yourself before. You're gonna go way beyond your breaking point. You're gonna run until you vomit. You're gonna study until you fall asleep. You're going to push and push and push, and then you're gonna push some more. And when you hit the limit, you're going to push again beyond that. You're going to force yourself into an adaptation response. And why? Because as Malcolm X said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. So if you don't put the work in today, if you don't do the unending, back-breaking work of developing yourself into something greater, the world is gonna pass you by. The people that are going to own it are gonna be the ones that did that work. And the one promise that I can make you right now is that somebody, somebody out there is outworking. Somebody right now is doing the things that I'm saying. Somebody right now is doing the work of failing and getting up and getting better and pushing themselves and triggering that glorious adaptation response that makes humans the apex predator. Someone right now, they're putting in that work. And if you don't, the future is gonna belong to them. And as Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. It's not okay to make excuses. It's not gonna slow people down. It's not okay to ask the world to stop so that you can step out front. It's not okay to expect little of yourself and demand great rewards. The only thing that's okay is to be in line with the way that the world really works. And if you want to be great, you've gotta become capable of greatness. You've got to develop your skill set. You've got to take what you have now, and if that's crawling, then crawl, but you drag yourself ever forward to a vision of yourself that is so clear and so specific that nothing could knock you off your path because you, my friend, know exactly where you're going. You're willing to pay whatever price it takes to get there. And no matter what anybody says, no matter how many 
hecklers come for you. No matter how many people try to throw dirt on you, try to stop you, try to knock you down, no matter how many people come for you at night while you sleep, you will rise and you will keep pushing forward and you will get better every day. And no matter how many times people chop at you, knock you down, knock you off the path, you will get back on. You will crawl till you can walk, you will walk till you run, and then you will run until you fly. And that, my friends, is the only path forward. So if you want a future that makes you happy, if you want a world that you're excited about, get your ass out there and earn it. Rule number two, don't be passive. Recently, you talked about ditching patience, but I think patience helps in the long run. Why do you think ditching patience will help? This is so fascinating. Um, so patience in the long run is the only thing that I can tell you is guaranteed to fail. There may be some advantage to what people are, the reason that people are telling you to have patience in the short term. Because here's what anybody trying to, anybody telling you to have patience is trying to get you to understand one very simple thing. Whatever you're trying to accomplish, it takes a very long time. And so if you go into it and you're playing this short term gain game, chances are you're gonna do things that are damaging to your reputation long term. That to me is not patience. That to me, is playing the long game. You want to play the long game. You want to be authentic. You want to be a good person. You want to do good things for people. You want to invest in other people, not because you're being patient. Because patient to me is a very passive position. It's saying, look, I'm not gonna like go all out today because at the end of the day, this is gonna take time. This is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And so I need to pace myself. That's what people hear when you tell them to be patient. I know because I've seen it play out thousands of times. So what happens when you tell people, be patient, is you're telling them, hey look, this is gonna take a really long time anyway, so pace yourself. Here's the reality, and you're, you're gonna feel the truth of this instantly. Most dreams never come true. Most of the people that you know, most of the dreams that you've had for yourself, they haven't come true. Why not? Because they're brutally difficult. The world is going to resist you. It is not going to be easy to overcome entropy, to overcome inertia. The only way that you're going to overcome that stuff is to go all out every day knowing that it's gonna take a long time. But the only way that that dream is gonna come true, even over that long period of time, is if you're going all out every day. So literally, a mantra in my life, and I can't, I cannot stress this enough, this is a cornerstone of why I've been able to achieve at the level that I've been able to achieve. Every day, everything I'm doing, I'm asking why can't it be done faster? Why can't I accomplish more right now? That it's not okay to put something off even till tonight. I need to do it right now. Now, you need to get very good at prioritizing because if you're trying to do everything right now, you're going to accomplish nothing. And if you're trying to be gimmicky or um, do shortcuts, all of that's gonna fail because none of that is playing the long game. But if ever you're allowing yourself to slow down because you simply are acknowledging that this stuff takes time, I'm telling you, it's never going to work. You've got to go all out. You've got to create momentum. Rule number three, have maniacal focus. This is critical. Whatever it is that you're going to do in your life, if you have any interest in doing something extraordinary, if you have any interest in performing better than other people, if you have any interest in doing something that will be remembered, this is the takeaway for you. Pick one thing and do it with force and determination. The only way that you're going to be able to push past the mountain of obstacles that is going to try to stop you is to have maniacal focus, to know exactly what you want, to have clarity of purpose, to have a crystal clear vision in your mind of what you're trying to accomplish, something that you could tell anybody in a single sentence. When you have that and you stare at it all day and you think about exactly how you're gonna make it happen and you tie your identity to it, then you've got a chance. Because then, my friends, when that obstacle comes before you, you will muster the force that you need to destroy that obstacle. And this is where this kind of aggressive language and thinking is going to help you because they will not go quietly. And that's the problem that a lot of good, gentle, beautiful souls have. 
is when the time comes, they don't muster the force that's required to get what they want. And I know you know, like I do, somebody who's a beautiful person, who's a good human being that we wish good things for. But sometimes bad things happen because they don't stand up for themselves. And as Jocko Willing said, most of us aren't defeated in one decisive battle. We're defeated one tiny, seemingly insignificant surrender at a time that chips away at who we should really be. That's how we lose. Rule number four, optimize your life. How important is rest and how much do you get of it? I'm trying hard at the moment to pursue my dreams, but sometimes I feel out of balance because I lack sleep, for example. All right, boys and girls, I'm telling you, I'm just gonna be super arrogant for a second. I built a billion dollar business without setting an alarm. Prioritize sleep. I work a lot. In fact, I'll take the Pepsi challenge. Anybody that wants to go head to toe with me in terms of what you get done, not just raw number of hours aimed at a computer or whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing and performing totally suboptimally. I'll just take the Pepsi challenge on that. I always prioritize sleep. I always prioritize my um, psychological optimization. So for instance, if I'm working around the clock, if this happened not too long ago, I was just working so many hours and it ended up encompassing too many things that took more energy than they were giving that I started to feel um, anxious isn't, in fact, I started to feel claustrophobic. That's exactly how I felt. I wanted to crawl out of my own skin. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just like, ah, it was driving me nuts. And I realized I need to chill for a minute. I need to meditate. I need to take an hour and go do something that's still moving me towards my dreams because that's my thing, but that I really enjoy. And so maybe in those moments I go read a comic because we're building a comic book publishing empire. So that's part of what I need to do anyway. But reading the comic is fun. I also need to meditate and just literally breathe from my diaphragm. So get the sleep that you need. That's super critical. You do not need to set an alarm. Sleep as much as you need to. And by the way, if you're doing things that are exciting to you, you're, I know people, some of you are gonna believe me because I hopefully I've earned the credibility with you up to this point, and some of you are gonna call total bullshit. You can ask my wife. I can set an internal alarm clock in my mind only if I'm excited about something or really stressed out, but that's a whole nother thing which I try hardly to do ever. But when I'm really excited about something, I can set an internal alarm clock. This morning, I told myself, wake up at 4.15. What time did I wake up, boys and girls? Not 4.14, not 4.16. I woke up at 4.15 because that was the time that I told myself to wake up. I can usually get within five minutes of what time I tell myself to wake up. It doesn't always work. And if I'm tired, I don't give myself that edict. I tell myself to sleep as much as I need. But when I'm really excited about something, there's something I want to get up and work on and I'm afraid there just won't be enough time and it's a reasonable amount of sleep. I'll say anything north of five hours, I can usually get myself to just wake up. So get the sleep prioritize cognitive optimization because then you're efficient and efficiency is the name of the game. So sleep, sleep, sleep. I am not a guy proposing um, the, you know, set your alarm, get up at 4 a.m. no matter what, it's not me. Go to bed early, get your sleep, meditate, get in a good, peaceful, calm, creative state so that you can really crush it. Rule number five, explore life. Would you be in favor of college students or anyone that may be considering it to take some time off to travel and experience as many new things as they can in order to find themselves? So absolutely, but not to find themselves. So you create yourself, you decide who you want to become, but figuring out who it is that you want to become, that is something that requires you to encounter a lot of things, to experience a lot of life. This is Kevin Kelly's whole notion of don't prematurely optimize. I think that some of the best advice young people are ever going to hear is you really wanna go out and explore, discover new things so that you can find what it is that you find interesting. Then that's where the discovery process ends and the developing process begins. Then you begin to create this notion of who you wanna become and then you go down the path of becoming that, gaining those skills, developing mastery in a certain area. But first, really make sure, because you're gonna give at least a decade of your life, if not more, to any one thing. So making sure that that's something that fills you up instead of chipping away at you is really, really important. And the only way to do that is to experience a whole lot of stuff. So yeah, I, I have no beef with taking that time off to go explore and discover new things. I think it's incredibly powerful. Rule number six, be yourself. You've got two choices in life. 
Choice one, you can become somebody else. Choice two, you can become yourself. Now, I really wish that there was only one choice, but in truth, there's not. And most people choose to try to become someone else because it's a roadmap. It's points in a direction. You see someone, you respond to something, you admire them, you want to be like them. And in that process, you've made your decision. In that process, you've decided to become somebody else. You have mistaken the finger for the moon. Instead, you need to understand that being inspired by somebody does not mean to become that person, to become that which inspires you. It is to understand fundamentally what is it about that thing that excites you? What is it? What is its essence? And when you can find its essence, then you can find out how it would apply to you becoming you. And as Zen Shi says, a flower does not think about competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. And that's really your job, is to see the outside world, to see the flower next to you, to understand the amazing things that are happening all around you, all of the incredible people and the essence of what they have and what it is that they've done to bring inside yourself and find out what does that look like when it's me. Not what do I look like when I'm them. And once you understand the difference between that, then you can really begin to be something unique. You can become that thing that you were meant to be, that thing that makes you feel alive and whole. And that's it, that's the secret. You're just trying to be something, not that's just inspiring to other people, but that you actually want to wake up every day and be. And that's the thing about it. There's no escaping you. Whatever you become, a lie, the truth, somebody else, yourself, whatever it is, you're gonna spend every day of your life there. And as Albert Einstein said, everybody's a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. And that's what confuses people. People believe that they're dumb because they're not finding their path. They're not defining things based on what excites them and what they want to live with every day. They're just looking to what the outside world says is good. And I think it's incredible that there are other people doing things that are so extraordinary that we aspire to be like that. But you have to understand the difference between being like someone and trying to actually be them. Rule number seven, have self-esteem. We talk of self-esteem in one of two ways, either as the sole determinant of success or as the ultimate enemy. Most people build their self-esteem around their accomplishments. They feel good about themselves if they're making the most money, they're dating the hottest person, or they've built the best product. They get caught in the rat race of validating themselves against the person who happens to be standing next to them. But there's a fundamental flaw with this equation. Because when your ego is that attached to your success, it's devastated by your failures. And what the most successful people know is you cannot leave your self-worth in the hands of anyone else. The most successful people get their pride from a different source, one that does not fluctuate with their successes and failures. So I knew I couldn't give up my self-esteem. I couldn't accept some weird role where I just was always the dumbass sitting in the corner. If I pride myself on being smart and you tell me I'm dumb and you put up a pretty good case for it, that's gonna damage my self-esteem. My self-esteem in that situation is very fragile. If on the other hand, you tell me that I'm dumb and I build my self-esteem around being the learner, now I'm gonna say thank you Please tell me in what way that I'm dumb because you will open my eyes to something that now I can address and I can go learn about that thing and I will have a new skill and I can go out and push and execute against that skill. One of the most powerful things that you could do is become the person that admits that you're wrong really fast. And it's crazy how much credibility you will earn with people simply by admitting I was wrong. Like 30 seconds ago, I was fighting so hard for something. I was really fighting for my position and then somebody says something and I realize, that's actually better. Imagine that. The more you try to tell me I'm dumb, the more areas that you point out that I'm weak, the more things you tell me I need to learn about, my eyes are open to something that, if true, I'm gonna go down that path and I'm gonna learn how to do that. And that is absolutely critical. Rule number eight, build your reality. What are your thoughts on changing reality with thoughts and repetitions? Will this work or is it just a theory? Okay, so there's no doubt that the way that the brain rewires itself is through repetition. Neurons that fire together, wire together. So you very much can create reality 
I want to say that um, it isn't unfortunately like the matrix, but it's so close that you might as well think of it like that. But to me, that's just a metaphor to get people to understand that you really can influence your, your hardwiring in your own brain and you certainly can influence the outside world by gaining a set of skills that allow you to go out and manipulate it. And I'll give you a super easy example. Learning to build a house means you can actually build a house and you can manifest that and turn a tree or concrete into a physical structure. Um, so you can definitely have that kind of influence. You can obviously influence other people by learning about psychology. Um, so all of these things are, are very, very possible. Rule number nine, my personal favorite, change your beliefs. The matrix has you. Now, the matrix to me is a simple metaphor. I don't actually believe that we're living in a computer simulation, and even if we are, I don't think that it matters. But what does matter is your entire life is being lived by your brain. Now, what do I mean by that? If you know a guy named David Eagleman, he wrote a book called Incognito. In the book Incognito, he makes one thing abundantly clear. You live in a virtual environment, whether you realize it or not, that virtual environment is created by the three pounds of squishy material between your ears. Think about this. Your brain never touches light. Your brain is encased in a bone box in total darkness, and yet it takes photons that fall on the eye and turns it into electrochemical stimulus. And from that, it paints this environment. It fakes the sense of depth. Think about this for a second. There's not some little image of this room projected into the back of my mind. This is all being turned into electrochemical stimulus. And my brain then manufactures this environment. There's actually a dime spot blank part in your field of vision where each optic nerve connects to your eyes and yet you have no experience of it that is completely invisible to you, even though it's massive and it's dead center in your eyes. The reason that you don't experience it is because your brain fills it in. Your brain makes a guess as to what would be there and your brain is so good at guessing and so good at presenting it as if it were real that you have no sense. It is completely seamless to you. When I heard that, I remember getting the chills and setting the book down and saying, my brain is lying to me. That rat. Now, the question becomes, if this is all made up, if the sense of distance between you and I is completely manufactured by my brain and it's not real, meaning what I see of it, it's real enough in that if I walk, I'll hit you at about the point that I'm expecting to bump into you because my brain can create that sense of distance but it's doing it by translating those signals. It's manufacturing this space. So if that's true, and my brain fills in the gaps, does my brain also have biases? And the answer is yes. Neuroscience has gone deep into how many different biases that we have as humans. I'll give you one, because this one is profoundly impactful. You're more likely to believe something negative than you are something positive. Now think about how that can echo through your life. Each of us has to realize that all of the beliefs that we have in our life are choices. The scary part about the most important beliefs in your life is most of them are invisible. I'm gonna give you a couple questions that will highlight invisible beliefs that you have that are controlling your life, that are exactly why I say the matrix has you, because depending on how you answer these questions will determine your life. And if you don't recognize something scary in your own answers, think about the people that you love, that you wanna help and you can't, and you wonder why. The answer is almost certainly related to how they answer some of these questions. Number one, this comes from Einstein. He said, the most important decision, the most important decision any human being must make is whether or not you live in a friendly or a hostile universe. Now, he could have said realization, but he didn't. He said decision. You have to decide because there is no empirical truth. You don't live in either a friendly or a hostile universe. You decide, and that perception, that viewpoint from which you judge everything else that happens in your life will be colored by whether or not you think it is a universe that is working for you or against you. And it's a choice. But most people think of their viewpoint as being patently real, as being just objective and true. And so they never stop to question the fact that they actually decided that at some point, either because their parents acted in accordance with that it was either 
hostile or friendly and they just absorb that or their friends or the people that they work with or whatever. But somewhere along the line, they came to believe that they live in either a friendly or a hostile universe. But you could change right now. Right now, you could make a different decision. And if you believe that the world is working against you right now, you could choose to believe that it's actually working for you. And in making a fundamentally new and different assumption, it empowers you to move forward. And this is something that I will repeat in this talk. The reason that matters is human beings do not invest energy in things that they don't think will yield a result. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is enjoy the moment. As Martin Luther said, even if I knew that tomorrow the world would go to pieces, I would still plant my apple tree. Some things you build whether you can control the outcome or not. Sometimes it's the process that is the thing that's meant to be enjoyed. It's the process that you're meant to invest in. And rather than always thinking about the goal, the outcome, or what you're going to get out of something, Focus on the something. Focus on the part of it that you can control because you can't always control the outcome. You can't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. Tomorrow's not guaranteed to any of us. And yet we all act. And yet we create momentum in our lives when we're at our best. But we do that not because we can control every aspect. We do that because we accept that there are things that we cannot control. And as Steve Maraboli said, incredible change happens in your life when you decide to take control of what you do have power over instead of craving control over what you don't. And that's where a lot of people get lost. They focus not on what they have in their hands, they focus instead on the things that they can't control. It irritates them, it frustrates them, it's like a splinter in their mind. They can't stop thinking about the things that they don't have control over. And they're blinded to the incredible wealth that is around them of things that they could enjoy right here, right now. That's why gratitude is such an empowering practice to sit there and not think of the glorious things that may await you in your future, but rather to think about the things that you have here in this moment. Oxygen in your lungs, a simple breeze on your face, a window in your house, someone that you love, someone that loves you. Nothing that costs money, nothing that was the pot of gold at the end of a glorious rainbow. It's not even about becoming something extraordinary and waiting for the results of that. It's simply understanding that the one thing you can control are your actions today, the choices that you make, what you get to do, how you think about yourself, the beliefs you choose to bring into your life, those things you control. And when you understand the power in acknowledging that control and taking control and using it, that's when your life is gonna begin to change. But first, you have to divorce yourself from being obsessively interested only in an outcome. If instead, you build your self-esteem, you build your pride on pursuit. You build your pride on allowing yourself to care about something so deeply that even though tomorrow is not guaranteed, that you're going to plant your apple tree today, that you're going to love that process because it is the thing that you can control. You can control how you show up. You can control how you play. You cannot control how other people react. You cannot control what they think about you. But you can control what you think about yourself. You can earn credibility with yourself. You can control what you do. And when you take full ownership of that and realize that your life is an exact reflection of your choices, of the things that you could control and what you did with them, then everything begins to change. You're not looking to blame somebody else. You're not even worried about anybody else. You're just asking one simple question. What can I do right now, regardless of tomorrow, to improve my life today? Focus there, and you'll enjoy every day of your life. Now, I've got a really special bonus Tom Bilyeu clip on how to develop your passion that I think you're really gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three-point landing questions. I want you to move from watching another video to actually taking action in your life and in your business. So answer these questions by yourself, talk about them with a friend, or leave your answers down in the comments below. Here we go. Question number one. What beliefs about yourself do you need to change to reach your goals? Question number two, how can you optimize your life to make these beliefs stick? And question number three, what will you do on a daily basis to boost your self-esteem? Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon and enjoy the bonus clip.
how do I find my passion? Asking how you find your passion makes the assumption that your passion has been lost somewhere. <laughs> your passion has not been lost. Your passion has never been developed. Passions are created, they're constructed, they're developed. And it starts with interest. One of the greatest misconceptions of our time is that your passion is something hidden inside of you. Michael Jordan wasn't born dreaming of slam dunks. Bill Gates' first word wasn't Microsoft. Even Elon Musk didn't start by reaching for Mars. But there is something different about these extraordinary minds. But it isn't what they were born with. It's something they had to learn to build brick by brick. Now, once you have that, you've got to start going deep into gaining mastery. And it's in the process of gaining mastery that you're going to find out if that interest turns into a love, then turns into a passion. People who are passionate are willing to fight through the boredom. Now, they're not doing it thinking, oh my God, this is so much fun. They're thinking, I want to win. I want to play at the highest level and I am willing to break myself in half. And this is the thing that I cannot get entrepreneurs to understand. If you want to be great, I promise you, as Tommy said, you already have in you what you need, which is the ultimate evolution approved ability to adapt. So you can change to get great. You can change to become whatever you need to, but it is the people that are willing to literally break themselves in half to get the result that they want. Your passion isn't something hidden inside of you that's going to reveal itself magically over a cup of coffee. It is not going to come knocking at your door. It's something you have to go out and build. Altruistic, world domination, honey empire, right? I'm grateful, I understand why I'm here. I think because I am so open. I wanted to think and see. It's a bloody brief life. All of you have the potential for enormous success. If you want to know what Gary V, DJ Khaled, Oprah, and others know about empire building that most people miss, check out the link in the description for a free bonus video.